Cluster C, anxious, fearful. It's not abnormal to be avoidant. Most people feel a little weird at meeting a bunch of new people. It's unusual, puts you in a weird situation, and to be uncomfortable in that would be normal, right? You ever go to the store and you see somebody you know and you kind of just act like you don't see them so you don't wind up in a conversation because you don't really feel like it at the moment? Yes. <laughs> Because you just don't want to get engaged into the social discourse. You just want to get your stuff and go home. And that's normal. That's just what people do. This is somebody who cannot interact with other people. They avoid other people. What other people? All of them. Almost all other people are avoided or endured with this sense of dread. Because they have at their core sense of self total inadequacy. I'm not good enough. Nobody likes me. Social rejection is a way of life for this person. However, you can imagine with hypersensitivity, anything that's positive is typically seen as neutral. And anything that's neutral is seen as negative. And anything that's negative is seen as extremely negative. And if you engage the world in that way, it's going to make you pretty inhibited. In which case, you're not going to get a lot of positive social feedback which becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy that just continues onward throughout life. Now, I worked with a guy once that his social inhibition was so bad, he, had, he really was a nice guy, like many of the people that I know that fit these categories. On some level, are really interesting, nice, normal people in many respects. He tried to go to school. I was working at the University Counseling Center. He had tried to go into a, a kind of a pod dorm situation where there's four, bath, uh, four bedrooms, a common you know, kitchen and a common living room and a common bathroom. Tried to do that. So in a way, he was trying to be really brave and go way out of his comfort zone. But he went too far out of his comfort zone and he really couldn't come out of his bedroom at all. So he would kind of sneak out and run to classes and sit in the very back and do what he could to endure that. But when he came back, the roommates he didn't interact with. He would stay in his bedroom and he would urinate into, into two liter bottles and cap it and wait till three or four in the morning when he was sure everybody was asleep. And then he would go out to the bathroom and, and dump them out. That's avoidant. It's not just a little shy, right? It's dramatic. Now, working with me, it's not going to make him a, a really sociable guy. But we were able to make a few advances where he did attempt to come out and interact with roommates. Not a lot, but at least he could go to the bathroom by the end of the semester. And he even joined a club. And interestingly, they gave him charge of like taking tickets at, at an event. He couldn't do that. So it was kind of a sad thing for him to go, I want to be involved, I want to, I want to be a contributing member of this club. But the people he was with kind of knew what was going on and they were okay. They were like, you know what, you, you don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. That's cool if you can't take tickets. Most people could take tickets, right? Quietly, thank you, thank you, thank you. You don't even have to say thank you. But he couldn't even look at people to take the ticket. It was too painful for him. Dependent personality disorder. All of us depend on one another to some degree. We're an interdependent social creature, the human being. And we rely on one another. But the dependent personality disorder relies on people to an extreme degree. Usually only a couple of people because only a couple of people can take that intensity. Oftentimes core family members. But in growing into adulthood, oftentimes we'll get involved very quickly in romantic relationships and become overly attached and overly dependent on the person, right? And what they fear most is losing those people. But the way they respond to that fear is to be extremely submissive and extremely, extremely clingy, which is very smothering to people, right? So what you see again is kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Somebody who's so afraid of losing people that they value will do anything to keep them around. Now most people don't want partners who are 
totally submissive, right? We, at least in this society, want people who have some independence and some thinking for themselves and take some responsibility. I mean, can't make decisions on anything alone. Everything has to be consulted on with that person that they're dependent on. And that clinginess, where are you? When are you coming home? Where are you going to be next? What can I, when will I see you next? Over and over drives a lot of people away. And so you see, relationship will collapse. And then the next opportunity, very quick to reattach to somebody else and, and cling again. Because there's this pattern of pervasive personality dysfunction that doesn't allow for smooth relationships. And of course, that also makes for problems in school, employment, family, etc. Now, obsessive compulsive personality disorder. You have to distinguish that. This is not obsessive compulsive disorder. Remember we talked about obsessive compulsive disorder the other day. It used to be an anxiety disorder because you were beset with obsessions. Had thoughts you couldn't control. They were aversive. That's anxiety provoking. And then you developed some kind of behavioral compensation, whether it's counting anything in the environment to distract your mind or whether it's something related to the obsession. If you had a germ phobia, then washing your hands. If you had, you know, a fear of attack phobia, you might have to lock and relock the doors and lock and relock the windows over and over and over, et cetera, et cetera. Those are, those are limited to the content of the obsession, right? So a person might live a perfectly normal life other than this anxiety producing thought process that takes up more of their time than it should in having to deal with it. And it's treatable. Obsessive compulsive personality disorder though, PD, makes all the difference. This is the life of the person. It's not an issue that they deal with and can compensate for sometimes or get treatment for in an effective manner. These people are obsessed with orderliness. Obsessed with perfectionism. Obsessed with control at the expense of flexibility and efficiency. Perfectionism in and of itself is not a terrible thing if you're attending to detail and trying to do your best to do your best. But most people when they're saying I'm perfectionistic mean well I have high standards. But somebody with this level of perfectionism would not be able necessarily to complete an assignment either a school assignment or a work assignment, not because they're not working on it, but because they will never get it to the point that it's where they can feel okay releasing control over it and giving it to the instructor or giving it to the boss. So a person, for example, in a work situation might be diligently trying to do their work assignment and then get in trouble because they're always behind on their deadlines. Because they are now missing the point of the activity because of the degree of this inflexibility with their personality. And so this is the kind of thing also you see uh, in those TV shows which I have an issue with showing people's pain on TV uh, like hoarders and stuff. So I, I know people who have literally like you could only walk through a path in the house because there were stacks of everything. Stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks of stuff. And the stuff doesn't have any real sentimental value. And it certainly doesn't have any monetary value. But there's this need for orderliness and perfection and control. And the person can't let go of the stuff. And so it's not just, oh, I'm a pack rat and I got a pretty full basement. It's like can't let go of anything because I can't let go of control. It's pervasive and it affects most of the life. So those are personality disorders per se.